Howdy folks! So I forgot to record an intro for this video, so this is the end, and uh, this is what it looks like when it's all done. Um, so this was pretty much just me making a couple clips over the last two weeks of when I've got time to work on it. It's not really cohesive in any way, so I'm just going to kind of stitch it together whichever way makes sense, and uh, it sort of makes more sense towards the end, I guess, because um, I did the majority of the stuff uh, on the last day. Um, which is when I'm filming this. So anyway, um, enjoy. Moving on to the ribbon situation, uh, I looked for ribbons and they're not as plentiful as they used to be back when, I mean the last time I shopped for uh, typewriter ribbons you could just go to your local office supply store and they had them, but that isn't so much the case anymore and um, aside from or special ordering ribbons from like the, the states and stuff and paying customs and all that crap, um, there doesn't appear to be super good quality ones available. So, uh, and it, it seems that you actually have to re-ink the ones that you buy anyway because they're usually, they've been in storage so long that they're all dried up. So I'm going to try something which may not work well, and that is I'm actually going to try and re-ink the existing ribbon. So I just bought some um, generic um, stamp ink. Um, I'm not using my fountain pen ink because fountain pen ink dries really fast. So I wanted to use some stamp ink, um, which probably should be similar to what this originally had and uh, I'm going to try and re-ink it. So I've I've wound the thing all the way to one side and all the way back just to check that there's no holes or tears or anything in this ribbon. It is structurally sound. Uh, it's just very dry and a little dirty in the center where it was draped across the machine for probably a couple decades. Um, so the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to have it half on each spool and then I'm actually going to drip the ink around here and let it seep in and uh, that's why I have it half on each so that it has to seep a, a shorter distance and uh, then I'm going to try it and uh, I'll, I'll put it in the thing and, and see how see what kind of uh, see what kind of impressions we get out of it uh, if this fails then I'll just order I'll order another ribbon I'll re-spool it and then I'll probably have to re-ink it anyway but uh, I, I thought I might as well try this because uh, you know might as well save 10 bucks so I've been at this a while, and I think I'm going to give up on this this particular ribbon. It's it's too far gone. It's not the ink isn't really wetting it. It's sort of beating on the surface, and even if I drip it in from the side, um, it's not really getting into the ribbon. And I'm using a lot more ink than I I want. Um, I mean I've done this before, and this is not behaving the way I expected. So I think I'm just gonna bite the bullet and uh, buy buy a new ribbon. I may have to ink it if it comes dry, but at least it will, it won't be as petrified as this. Um, I know it's just cloth, but this is something, it, it's either it's coated in something or just, just, it's just so dry. It's, it's, it doesn't behave the way I expect it to. So I tried at least. Um, so yeah, I'll have to wind this all off. Now it's all inky, but, uh, yeah, it's really only just gotten on the, on the edges and that's about it. It's, it's, it would be horribly, horribly unusable if I was to go through with this. So, too bad. It's been a few days and I've got in the uh, the new ribbon. Um, so this was just like an Amazon special basically. Uh, the copyright date on the box says 2012 and it's probably right. It's probably when this thing was made because of course uh, it is dry. Um, it has some ink in it, um, but it is not, uh, it's not what you'd expect. So. Uh, I am going to probably have to add some ink to this, but not, uh, not. I, I hope it's not going to be as bad as this. So I've taken one of the spools off, it's just hooked on, so I'm going to uh, wind this all the way to one end and basically re-spool this onto here, and then I'm going to try and re-ink it on here, because if I ink it on this and then move it, I'm just going to get my hands all black. Um, so I'll just do that, and uh, we'll see how that goes. So I've re-spooled the uh, new ribbon onto the... Uh, old spools and you can see of course the new ribbons quite a bit uh, quite a bit shorter than the original and of course that makes sense this is one of those like universal ribbon things to probably design the spools as small as possible um, and it just has the added benefit that they don't have to produce as much ribbon so anyway there is a bit of ink on this end so because I've spooled it what uh, the ribbon that is on the outside of this spool is actually what was on the inside of the original spool uh, and there is some ink on this side so uh, I'm gonna just try this and see what happens um, see uh, there's no point in me widening this all the way forward, putting some ink on it and doing, you know, winding it all the way back. That's kind of a waste. These spools are so cheap, I actually ended up breaking the uh, little pin 
uh, that holds the ribbon off on uh, just getting this off. So, anyway, this is the old ribbon, by the way. Um, and you can see on top, this is the part that I tried to re-ink, but, I mean, you can see it's it's pretty pretty decrepit, and I'm not really going to... Uh, I think it was a bad idea. It was a bad idea trying to, trying to re-ink that. So I'll be disposing of that. But anyway, I'm going to put this in the typewriter and get some paper and see what happens. So after rustling this ribbon in here, getting it all in the guides, of course I had to put it in the guides the wrong way the first time, so I had to do it all twice. Um, I've got the ribbon in, and I have made some uh, test impressions here. And uh, this is me just kind of dicking around, but the really important bit is these two lines down here. So basically all I did was I just pressed every key on the keyboard from left to right, top to bottom, then pressed shift lock, and then did the same thing on the second row. And so this allows me to quickly gauge what state each key is in. So you can see here, of course, you know, one, two are fine, and then we're missing three and four before we get to five. And so the fact that five is right next to two indicates that the lever, the, the tight bars, as I have been corrected, um, as the tight bars are not even getting close enough to the page to actuate the carriage over one space. So these are really bad keys. Five is okay, six is pretty faint, and then you can see that seven and eight are missing, but they're blank spaces, and that means that the, the type bars got close enough to the page to actuate the carriage, but they didn't actually make contact with the page. So they're bad, but not as bad as three and four. And then, of course, nine kind of works. Zero, again, same situation as before. And then moving over the letters, we have Q, W, and then E and R, of course, are both missing. Um, then we have T, Y, U, um, I is totally missing, OP, and then the apostrophe, so that's okay. Um, AS are good, um, DF are missing, G is kind of weak, uh, H is, uh, H is, either H or J, I'm actually not sure which one um, is, is worse than the other, because there's only one space there. Um, K, and then of course L, uh, semicolon, and dash are all missing. Um, ZX, uh, C, and V are both uh, missing. Again, one of those is worse than the other. Then there's B, then there's this thing that kind of is the top of an M, or an N, so that's kind of shit. M is missing, S the ca comma you can kind of see, the period's gone, and uh, the slash is kind of there. Uh, the uppercase is quite a bit better, as you can see, and that's because, uh, obviously, when you move the... Um, some people have said this is a basket, um, but I looked at some official IBM documentation, and uh, they they don't call that the basket. But but anyway, um, when the basket is down, um, you can see we get quite a few more characters. So we get characters from uh, things that didn't work at all. So for example, um, three has the pound sign, and we do get the pound sign here. Um, and the dollar sign from four is kind of there. It's just barely an impression. Um, and actually, I'm not sure if there's any characters. Uh, all the characters on the top row made some form of impression. Of course, number four being the worst. And then on the top line, of course, we've got... Uh, I mean, we've got every character on the top line of that. A, S, D, F, just G, K, H, F, all... Yeah, we got every every character on the second line, and we've got every character on the bottom line. So all of the uppercase work, um, or I should say all the shifted characters work. Um, R sucks, and 4 sucks. R, of course, I had those major problems with, so I'm not surprised. 4 is kind of a surprise. Um, so 4 is by far the worst of all of the, uh, all the ones left. R is no longer the worst. Um, so really, it's going to just be me lubricating these um, with uh, WD-40 and then following that up with some machine oil uh, to try and free the, um, the cams. I, I called them, them dogs, but in the IBM service documentation, they call those things cams, those little plastic pieces. And uh, they are not sliding uh, freely enough, uh, and they're, they're not pivoting on their axis properly. So uh, I need to free those up. But uh, this is a good sign. I mean, I am very close to being able to type out a letter on this, which was my ultimate goal, and uh, everything, everything else works. I mean, I even used the margins, or uh, margin set and release to actually set the, uh, the margin on this, and it works. So 
uh, yeah, really, that's all I've got left to do is just get all those things working. So yeah, I will leave it to that. And, oh, I, one thing I will mention is I've got this this uh, control over here. Of course, I pose pose the question: What is this? I had someone comment that this is a an intensity control um, for how hard the type bars hit the page. And uh, looking up some IBM uh, service documentation, that is indeed what this is. So um, zero being the lightest and ten being the hardest. Uh, and I'm doing this all on, um, you know, somewhere on the low end. So not all the way to zero, but like two or four. I'm not doing this on ten because I want to make sure that everything makes an impression at the lowest setting because it should. And then, um, you know, I don't want to just, you know, crank this up and run it like that. Uh, I will if I absolutely have to, but I, I'm pretty pretty sure I can get this thing to work properly at the uh, the low level. So uh, I will. There's no point in me showing you what I'm doing. Uh, let me just get to it. So in my cleaning process, I've managed to knock out one of the springs for the cam mechanism that um, handles the basically the key repeat defeat on uh, this key right here, unfortunately. So I need to get that little tiny spring down in here and uh, it pulls this little metal tab back um, so that you can uh, repeatedly press the key. And I gotta get it in there with some tweezers without breaking it and of course I've uh, got my bendy tweezers, my regular tweezers and some super fine ones and uh, I've tried for a little bit and I've gotten it close, but not in exactly, so uh, I think this is going to be another couple hours of wrestling. The best way I've found to get this in here so far is if you actually pull the type bar up towards the page, you'll actually notice that that comes down a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to access. So I've found a way that I can actually use a screwdriver and kind of hook it in there and it holds the type bar up and holds it in that position so I can use both hands because really you need both hands to hook it on one side and then the other side because unfortunately that little metal tab that's bent over is on you know it's on the front side and you need to get underneath it and unfortunately there's no way to access that from the bottom so uh, yeah uh, give, wish me luck Okay, so after about two and a half hours, finally got the spring back in, and it is now working correctly. Don't ever knock that spring out, ever. Um, I think the only way I was able to do it was because it was the key on the end, thank God. It wasn't one of the keys in the middle, or otherwise I would have had to find a way to disassemble the whole thing, because um, it's ridiculously small, and uh, it's in the worst possible place. I ended up having to hook this side and then hold it with one set of tweezers from this side and then come in from the back and then hook the other side, um, just kind of deforming the spring to get it in there. But uh, the spring did not permanently deform, so it's uh, perfectly functional. So the main reason why I think the keys aren't working properly is because these plastic cams are slipping on this rubber roller. Now, I think partially it's due to the fact that the rubber roller is super old and it's not really uh, as sticky as it used to be, and so I might need to get some rubber roller restorer. It's kind of a spray. It makes the rubber a little bit tacky. It's not the greatest stuff, but um, that might be useful. And of course, the other thing is I think that I can clean these uh, these cams. So I've just got my 99.9% uh, .9 isopropyl alcohol, um, and I'm just going to clean all of these. I'm going to try and just get the contaminants off, and uh, there is a bit of uh, just lubricant and stuff from while I was lubricating the other components that sit above this, a bit of it's dripped down. So I'm going to make sure these are nice and dry, totally clean. Same thing with the roller. And I'll see if that makes a difference. And if it does, I may need to invest in uh, doing something about this roller. But uh, I've made sure that all the components up top are well lubricated. And what I think is happening is the keys that work, the very few keys that work, uh, the cam is ro riding the roller all the way up and um, it's basically reaching the end stop against this metal comb and the 
keys that don't work, uh, it's disengaging from the roller bef much l before it gets there, and of course it's not able to transfer all the energy it needs, and that's why the type bar doesn't actually hit the page. So I'm going to uh, hope, hope that this makes some noticeable difference, and that this is the problem. Uh, why exactly it works with the capital letters, um, or like the shifted versions, and not the lowercase, uh, probably has something to do with the angle of the um, the angle of the uh, the linkages inside, and I actually think that it, it, the angles are such a way that when the basket is lowered, um, you actually don't need to uh, travel as far. And so I think it's just a coincidence um, that it works, and it's not that there's a not that that's actually causing a major change. I looked at the tolerances and stuff and the guides, and there's no corrosion there, and it's well lubricated. So I don't think that uh, I don't think it's a problem up up top. I think it it is directly related to the cams. So after uh, thoroughly cleaning the roller and the cams with isopropyl alcohol, um, we go from having you know about four letters working, you know like one, two, you know Q, Q and W pretty much were all that were working. I can't remember where the last test was. I, this isn't totally in. Uh, in perfect order, but anyway, uh, now I'm seeing letters that I've never seen before. So we have uh, a whole bunch of things that work now. Um, it's not everything. We definitely are missing some characters, but it is uh, infinitely better than it was before. So I think I've narrowed down the problem, and I definitely didn't clean all the cams perfectly. There's still some black marks on them, so um, probably you know rubber that's been on there forever. And the ISO does do a pretty good job of getting all the black stuff off. Um, so, you know, it's taken a bit. But uh, I think I'm going to do that again, um, just do a bit more cleaning, and see if I can focus on the areas directly below the characters that are not working now, and uh, see if I can get them working again. So I've gone through another cleaning cycle, specifically on the keys that were giving me problems before. And I've now printed out an entire test of the typeface in this keyboard, all the lowercase and the uppercase. Nor the stuff at the top, it actually starts at the one here. And uh, as you can tell, uh, there's a couple of interesting things. First of all, the lowercase is uh, not what we would really consider lowercase, it's just smaller versions of the uppercase letters. And uh, that, I guess, explains why this typewriter has a one key. Most keyboards, most, most typewriters, worse, didn't have a one key. You just used the lowercase l as a one, and they were identical. However, in this case, because the lowercase l is actually, you know, an l, um, it doesn't really work that way. But uh, anyway, you can see it looks pretty good, but there are still a couple letters that are flaky. In particular, the 4 is a bit weak, the y has some problems, and the b has some problems. Uh, but other than that, uh, it is fully functional, so I am very happy. I'm going to go over the Y again and the B again in the same manner, because it seems that every time I do a cleaning, it gets better, so I'm just going to do that again. And then hopefully, I have a fully functional typewriter, and that at that point, I'm going to actually clean it. So I've been putting off cleaning the thing. Of course, it looks all nasty around the keys and stuff. Um, I wanted to make sure that it worked before I bothered to do that, so I'm going to get, uh, I mean, this isopropyl alcohol is awesome, so I'm going to continue to use that. I'm just going to clean all around the keys, uh, all the controls, anything that you can see from the outside, as well as the case, and at that point, I can put it back together and give you a demo. So I'm just cleaning the keys, and uh, I originally thought I was just going to clean them on the keyboard, and then I thought, well, why don't I just take them off? And uh, they do pull off. They are double shot um, injection molded, um, so you could soak these in water, which I might do. You can see this enter key here, this return key, should I say, comes complete with spider, uh, old spider nest, which is nice. Um, this one is actually cracked. You can actually see that there is a small crack. I don't know how close this will focus. But uh, there is a slight crack in the uh, hole where the slot where this uh, connects. Uh, it's the first key I've taken off so far that's broken. I'm not sure if any of the others are broken. I'll find, I guess I'll find out. Um, it's not too bad, but it, it is a little worrying because, you know, you press this key off-center because it's so big, right? It's really the biggest key other than the space bar. And if you hit it off-center, it'll constantly put a torque on it, and that's what will probably make that crack get worse. So I might end up gluing this back together before I put it back on. 
I'm not really going to bother to clean inside the key in there. I know some people, if they were doing a proper restore, they would definitely be doing that. But like I said, this isn't a restore. This is just a resurrection. And now that it's working, I just want to make it look presentable. So I'm not going to be cleaning inside the unit. I'm just going to be cleaning the stuff you can see so it looks good. And uh, you can yell at me all you want for that, but that's what I've chosen to do because I just don't have the you know hundreds of hours required to do a proper res restoration on this. So I've just taken off the top row of keys here. Wish I really had a key puller because some of these are really hard to get off. And they all look pretty much the same except for the 1 and the 8 key. And uh, the 8 key I had the hardest time getting off. And uh, you'll notice that it's not the same on the back as all the other keys. The other keys are all hollow and they have this white insert, whereas the 8 key is solid and doesn't have such an insert. And the 1 key, even though it's all white and nasty, it's also solid, the same thing as the 8 key. So I, I suspect that, you know, these, once I clean up the 1 key, it'll look the same. So it sort of leads me to believe that maybe these keys were replaced with the, those from a, a newer model, like a B or a C, and um, they, may, they maybe they changed the, uh, the key uh, form. I'm, I'm thinking that maybe they found that this sort of uh, design was slightly weaker um, than it needed to be, and maybe, you know, the cracking that I saw in the return key um, happened on other keys, and so they decided to go to a more solid key in the later uh, versions, and maybe these got replaced. Um, by uh, one of IBM's, you know, their customer engineers, or which is what they called their service technicians. So, um, yeah, interesting. So I'm, I wonder how many other keys I'm going to find like that. I'm doing it row by row, um, just because it's easier to pull them out this way. So a few hours of cleaning later, and I've got all the covers back on, and it is, at this point, pretty much complete. So I've cleaned all of the keys. You can see they look a lot better on the sides. Um, I've super glued the crack in the return key, so hopefully that doesn't get any bigger. Um, but there's not really much I can do beyond that. Um, so after taking all the keys off and cleaning them, uh, the only keys that appear to be replacements are the 8 key, the 1 key, and the margin uh, release. Those keys are all solid plastic with painted on letters. The rest of the keys are all double shot injection molded. Now, the 8 and the 1 key look fine, but as you'll notice, the margin release key, some of the uh, white paint has come off. Similarly, the same thing has happened to um, this sort of impact control and uh, even the power switch. Uh, the lettering on, on off, for example, is starting to come out. So I'm going to need to find some uh, white paint that I can paint those letters back in to the impressions in the plastic, but I'll save that for another day. The, uh, the case looks a lot better now than it did before. I know it may not look great, um, but it is definitely a lot less brown than it was. Um, it was amazing the amount of brown water that came off of this thing as I washed it. I actually chose to wash it in my bathtub um, to keep, it, uh, to keep the, the dirt down. And I ended up using um, basically the, the material they have in Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. It's that very, very, very light abrasive. Um, to help get the uh, the case clean because it's got that textured uh, that textured paint, so uh, you got to get deep into it to get the dirt out. And uh, so I think I think it looks pretty good. Um, I'm not going to bother to repaint it. I don't have the kind of paint to do it, and it's not something that I really care too much about. But um, that's all done. I've cleaned all the rubber rollers and all the controls, and I've uh, tried to get in there and sort of scrape in between the uh, the different not uh, grooves in the, the knobs and things and it's about as good as I think it's gonna get and of course the power switch works and everything so you know I can turn the unit on you can hear it you can kind of feel it vibrating it's not probably not as uh, as quiet as it originally was I'm sure that it could be made better but I think it's fine so uh, let's get some paper in it and uh, type some stuff out so of course, it's a regular typewriter. I'm going to try and do this with my left hand, which may or may not be possible. One thing that I find really interesting on this typewriter is it doesn't have the ability for you to pull this forwards. So I remember on all my old Smith Coronas, you could pull 
this forwards and get the paper under it, but in this one you've got to pull it up and then hold the paper and pull it back down again. It's a bit odd. Um, I, I don't know. But anyway, so after I put it back together, I tested the keys. There were a couple keys that were a little bit flaky, um, like the four key and things like that, the four key and the G key and the T key. Um, I was doing some test, some test pages and they were coming out kind of faint and sometimes not at all. Uh, but they, they appear to be okay now, but you know, I've, I've left it and gone, done some other things. So it's been a few hours since I've turned it on. We'll see if they've resorted back to not working properly again. Um, the good thing about this unit, at least, is that there's no bottom to it. Um, there's no bottom panel. There's one under the motor uh, at the back, but there's none underneath the keyboard. And so all of those cams and that roller uh, are all accessible without taking any of the panels off. So that's why I put the panels back on, even though it's not perfectly working. It's just because I don't have to really worry about it. I can, um, I can sort of clean and, and dry those um, as, as much as I need. And I think it may just be a, a case of some, some of the, the machine oil that I put in those uh, cam bushings is dripping out and it's wetting the uh, rid ridged surface of the cams that rub us up against that roller and it's causing them to slip. And that's why it works and then you, you, know, you clean it, it works, and then you wait a bit and then it doesn't work again. So it may be just a case that I gotta wait for that oil to let gravity pull it out um, and simply keep wiping it off with a paper towel. It's pretty easy to do. But anyway, so uh, yeah, so we can, we can do some, some, some simple uh, character typing here. You can see, yeah, the number four is quite light compared to the rest, so there there is still a problem there. And you know, yeah, you'll notice we have we're missing a letter here. Of course, uh, Y is missing. So if I try it again, there it worked that time. So it isn't totally perfect, but anyway, um, what's really kind of nice about this thing is just the. Uh, the, the 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 feel of the keys and it's something that I know I won't be able to uh, to get across is how this feels to type on but it's very very nice um, it doesn't feel like a mechanical keyboard because it it doesn't have the, the the tactile feedback down here um, it's kind of like you kind of think of it like the like a delayed Cherry MX Blue or something, because of course you do get audible feedback, but it's delayed sub substantially, and of course it comes from up here, not from down here. It's very easy to press these um, keys, and you know, it, it kind of takes a bit of getting used to. Yeah, you can hear it's definitely something that's vibrating. But anyway, it, it takes some getting used to because with a typewriter, you immediately think, you know, I got to press these things really hard, but it doesn't matter at all how hard you press these things down. Um, whether you press them very, very lightly or really, really hard, it does not change the output at all. And that's really awesome. Um, and I can see why all of their advertisements were, you know, advertising, you know, that it's the easy way to type or whatever. And uh, it's because it, it, it's just like typing on a computer keyboard. Um, and they, they have a very good feel when they bottom out, and the, of course the, the key repeat is kind of interesting. Um, when you press a key down, you can hold it down, and of course it's not going to type any more letters, and then when you release it, you can sort of, you, maybe you heard that, there's a, there, there's a, a tiny little metal catch which re-engages the key when you bring it back up, and you can actually feel that when you let go of the key. So it, it, it has a really, really interesting tactile sensation that I really can't compare to any other keyboard um, that I've ever tried. Let me just... Uh, the lazy dog. I just have to finish typing this. And uh, yeah, so the H key didn't work that time, but I bet it works now. Yeah, so... So, so that just, you know, takes a little bit of warming up for that key to work properly. Uh, and I'm sure that I'll be able to iron out those problems over, uh, yeah, like it worked there, but it didn't work there. So it, it's, 
it's got some some minor issues, but it's it's working pretty well now. So I think I'm going to call this project mostly done. I may come back to it and just tweak it a little bit over time. But uh, I think the, the bulk of the work is, is done and over with. And uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with this. I looked online. I could not find any of these things for sale. I couldn't find any parts for sale of this type. So I don't actually really know uh, what this is worth or anything like that. I don't think it's worth very much, mostly because of the fact that it's in horrible condition. But uh, yeah, um, the only things that I'd really need, of course, would be this plastic piece um, for this, in, this sort of intensity control. Um, I would probably like to get another clutch for the, um, the uh, line advance and that rope for the line advance. Um, but, you know, maybe I'll set up some eBay search query and Maybe I'll get notified if they ever become available. I don't know if they will. But anyway, um, I'm going to stop waffling. And uh, hopefully you found this to be uh, an interesting project. I definitely did. I, I learned a lot. gave me a lot of appreciation for these older machines. And uh, I will update you if I uh, ever find uh, something else to do with this. So as always, thanks for watching.